Today on Hands On Photography, we are going deep into the world of food photography. I promised you a lab, so we're gonna walk through setting up a nice, cool food photography shot. Stay tuned. Hands On Photography is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Using the same password everywhere is a security nightmare waiting to happen. LastPass easily creates unique passwords for every site. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This is Twit. This episode of Hands-On Photography is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash hop. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Matt Pruitt, and this is Hands-On Photography here on Twit TV. I hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable, as always. Doing a little bit something different now because, you know, previously on the show, we talked about doing some food shots. And I said, all right, now that we talked about it, I want to do a little bit of a lab for food photography. But before we get into that, I just want to say welcome to all of you that are uh, joining us this week for the very first time. I appreciate you popping on in here and checking us out. Uh, do me a favor. Open up your favorite podcast app, whether it's Spotify or Google Play or Apple Podcasts or whatever. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit subscribe and hit the little notification bells, all that good stuff. That way you can get the show automatically each and every Thursday uh, when we release these things here. Uh, but you can find all of our subscription options on the website, twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands on photography. Thank you very much for being a part of this here community. So now let's go ahead and get started with this week's show. Again, previously we talked about shooting some food photography and I explained that anybody can do food photography because it's just most of the time we have food available to us one way or another and it doesn't take a whole lot of fancy equipment. Now granted, today's lab, I know there's some things in here that most of you all will not have just yet, but you don't need everything. Um, the main thing that I'm working with is just my actual product my uh, large window that's over here to my right that's going to have some sunlight coming in. Unfortunately, at the time of the recording, the sky decided to get super duper, super duper hazy here in Northern California as we're still dealing with a lot of the forest fires. Shout out to the local fire department and firefighters out there trying to keep everybody safe. Thank you for that support. But yeah, I'm dealing with the window over here that's going to give me my diffuse light. It's a large light source, so it's going to be really, really soft um, when it hits my much smaller product that I want to do the shot with. And from a camera standpoint, I'm going to be using the Pixel 4 XL and I'm going to walk you through just lighting everything up, setting up the composition, and I'll even show you my uh, my my small smartphone screen. I can't talk today. Smartphone screen to let you see what I'm working with. OK, so let's go ahead and get started with this here demo so on the screen you'll see uh i just have this bottle of whiskey here in the shot and we can go about this thing a couple ways it's this is not a sponsored um demo or anything like that i'm trying to turn the, the logo away from the camera some of you whiskey aficionados will know what this is but that's neither here nor there i just wanted to do some type of demo and if you look to the camera camera right over here on this side You'll see this is where the light source is coming in because it's a lot brighter on this side of the bottle and it drops off into shadow over here on the other side on the left. And that's fine because we talked about having directional lighting when you're dealing with your, your food photography because that directional lighting will give you some shadows and it'll give you some contrast to help make things stand out a little bit more. Now in the background, you'll see I have this little backdrop back there. That's just a paper backdrop looks like some wood you can get it for about 10 bucks online we'll put a, a, a link in our show descriptions you can get it from michael's art store for like ten dollars it's a really great value but this is what we're going to start with it's just a simple backdrop on a wooden table and some whiskey because the theme of whiskey is typically something smoky some smoky sweet uh, wooden flavors when you have whiskey and it's just the vibe that comes with it so i want to try to present that in the shot. All right, so let's just go ahead and line this up and just give us a nice little shot. So let's see, how can we do this here? We'll hop over to the overhead cam so you can see how I'm lining it up. Just a touch. 
Uh, I'm going to angle it just a little more, something like that. And then let's see how I else want to do that. I like that the right side of it having a bit of a sh uh, shadow. So let's keep that shadow there. I'm going to push it up just a little more center frame. And it looks like I'm nice and balanced. I'm not tilting left or right with my camera. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to make it a little bit tighter because I don't necessarily want all of that showing over there on the right hand side. So I'm eventually going to crop that out. But just zooming in a little bit will help. Maybe even turning the camera just a touch. OK, so yeah, now that's something to start with. So I'll go ahead and click click the shutter there. And we are good to go. We got our first shot, but quite honestly, that's OK. I can run it through post and do a little bit of added contrast and reduce the highlights just a little bit. But eh, it, it could be better. So let's step it up a little bit. So let's go back to the camera. And I have some extra props here. So we have the whiskey. So why not actually get a glass glass of the whiskey and add it to this photograph? So I have this glass and I can just place this back here like so move the glass in and that's looking a little bit better, right? It's, it's just a much better composition. So a couple things to consider here. You notice this label here, that's a little bit distracting. I'm going to turn it away just a little bit, but I still want it to be seen as an actual bottle back there. And then you can't tell from this particular angle, but this glass has a logo on it as well. Don't want that, right? So just turn it. You don't have to do anything special in Photoshop or anything like that. Just turn it out of the way. You never know. So I'm just going to turn it a little bit more. And it should just sort of fade out of the scene a little bit. So I can do it that way or I could do it more so with the bottle on the right. Something like that. That looks pretty good, too. I like it this way because I get this reflection um, showing up on the table from the bottle. Gives it a little more depth, in my opinion. So I like that. So again, we got that single source of light from the right hand side and we'll go ahead and just snap the shutter. Got a nice looking composition. OK, so we're, we're getting there. I think we can do a little bit more with this when you're doing the food photography. Like we talked about last week, you got to figure out what's the story you're trying to present. Are you trying to send a certain message? And I didn't necessarily want this to just be a bottle of whiskey. I want this to be a bottle of whiskey. Enjoy this drink now kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I added that glass with with the whiskey in it. And I'm saying whiskey in air quotes because that's a little bit of secret. I can tell you about that here momentarily. But I want to just show the story of here's some whiskey. Well, let's have a drink now. Enjoy this nice, refreshing beverage, if you will. So I want to take that and I'm going to add another prop which is this right here. This is a simple wooden coaster because again, we're talking whiskey, we're talking aged wooden barrels and just rustic and it just fits. And again, it just gives the shot a little bit more character. So let's just take a look over here, take this coaster, put it into the scene. That's not gonna work like that, right? So just take it and put the whiskey on top of the coaster getting better right so that's not bad i'm going to turn this a little more because i don't want really want that logo showing up in there but we got yeah that looks pretty good we got some nice depth there the camera is tilted a little i can see that because of the little indicator on the screen saying one degree so let's make sure we're getting nice and balanced here with the smartphone and we're good to go get in there one more shot boom looks good now there's a couple more things that we can do to this but i want to take a few minutes to, to thank this week's sponsor the fine folks at express vpn
This episode of Hands-On Photography is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like going to the bathroom and not closing the door. Your internet service provider knows every website you visit. ExpressVPN creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so your online activity can't be seen. Fire up the app, click one button, and you're protected. I love using ExpressVPN when I go out on my walks and I'm off of my home internet. So if you're like me and believe your online activity is your business, secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash hop today. Use my exclusive link, expressvpn.com slash hop, and you can get an extra three months free. That's expressvpn.com slash hop. All right, so let's keep working on this composition. I have a couple more ideas in mind, and I think it can really make a big difference in how this shot is going to turn out. So let's go back to my trusty Pixel 4 XL and the composition there. And again, we got the, the, the cocktail, not the cocktail. We got the beverage. We got the coaster. We got the bottle. The light's looking great. Uh, it's balanced out. Nice little background. All of that looks good. But we can do one more thing. And I think it's just, just as simple as adding one more prop to this thing. And when you think about whiskey and enjoying whiskey, it's commonly known that people are going to have one more thing, and that's a cigar. And what I have here is just a little small humidor that has some cigars in it. So let's go ahead and pull these out. And we're going to add a cigar to the scene. See? Good old cigar. These came as a gift from a great friend of mine back east, Mr. Mike. You know who you are. Thank you, my man. I appreciate that. So let's go ahead and go back to my screen. I have the cigar in hand. What can I do with that? Let's just place it like this. Something sideways to where you can tell there's a cigar in there. And again, we're getting a nice little shadow showing up here on the ground, uh, a reflective shadow. And I think that looks pretty good, you know, because the light is just it's just right on it. Actually, I can push everything back maybe two inches like that. Let's see how that looks in the frame. Yeah, see, I'm looking at the frame now and I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I have just a little too much head and not enough foot on the bottom. So I'm going to push it back maybe another inch or so. So I'm just going to push back a little bit more like so. Okay, that's a little bit better. And it gives me all of these different elements in the scene. So let's go ahead and take that shot. Boom, done. Pull it up in the gallery and let's see how it looks. Not bad, but I wanna try something else. I wanna put focus on the jar. I mean, not jar, on the glass. And one of the things that you can remember to do when you're using smartphone photography is you can tap on your screen uh, regardless of what your scene is to put focus on it as well as to adjust the exposure for that particular object in the screen. So I want to tap on the screen and just tap on the, the glass right there. And you notice I get this extra overlay so I can adjust the exposure like that. So I'm going to take that exposure down just a little bit. And you see it's locking in focus that glass. Let's bring it up maybe a little bit, not too much. Okay, there. So that's got it locked in. The glass is nice and crispy. The, the bottle is a little bit soft and it's okay. The cigar is a little bit soft and that's okay because the subject of this is the actual glass. So let's shoot it. Done. Okay. Now, folks, I think that looks pretty good, quite honestly, but... There's still one more thing that you, that you can do to this. It's just something to give it a little bit more character, a little bit more pop. And it's as simple as just putting a cork on it. <laughs> That's all it is. So let me show you what we're going to do here. So let's go back to the screen. Let's take the cork and remove it. All right. So we've removed the cork from the whiskey bottle. And why not? place it here in front of the glass like that. Okay. Better yet, why not take it and like put it on its side, something of that nature. So we have a little bit more 
a little bit more symmetry. But now that I'm looking at it, that color is blending in a little too much with the coaster. So I'm going to move it just a touch. There, I'll just play around with it. Turn it this way, see if that looks better. Something like that. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. One extra element, one extra little bit of a prop, and it was already included with the bottle. So let's go ahead and put our focus on that glass again. Turn that exposure down just a little bit. We got beautiful lighting on this side of the frame, shadow on this side of the frame, and we're gonna hit the shutter. And we have a very, very nice looking photograph. Now, if you want, you could add some, some extra light into this scene. Um, again, I, I highly recommend just using one light if you can, especially if it's window light. But if you're thinking that one side of your, your frame is just a little bit too dark, you can always um, get something like a reflector uh, or get a piece of white foam core and place that outside of the frame opposite of the light source. That way you're going to get a little bit of a bounce back and reflective light onto the other side, filling in that shadow on the other side of the frame. Just a quick little tip. Now, I mentioned previously, there was one little thing about this glass of whiskey. Let me just grab this glass of whiskey here. OK, and I say glass of whiskey in air quotes. So, boy, look at that. Isn't it just beautiful? Oh, it smells so good. Let me take a sip. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful whiskey. No, this is not whiskey. I'm not going to drink on air while I'm doing this show. Come on, folks. This is good old tea, just plain black tea. If you're doing a shot like this, you don't necessarily want to use your expensive whiskey. You paid a lot of money for it, more than likely, and you don't want to always use your fine products for your particular shots. That's why you want to use props. So what I like to do is I just take a little bit of water and put it into the glass and take a tiny little tea bag, let it sit in there. And the longer you leave it in there, the darker it'll get because some whiskeys are not quite this dark the way this bourbon is. So I left it in there a little bit longer to make it darker. And you never would have known that this was not whiskey. You never would have guessed it was plain old tea and it works just fine, especially in photography. A lot of food photographers use a lot of different tips and tricks like that. Um, if you look closely <laughs> at some of the food photography that you see out there, you notice the little bit of extra details that are in there. And it's just little props, things such as um, like look at a, a pancake photograph and someone is just drizzling the syrup on the top of the pancakes as they're snapping the shot. Looks beautiful, looks scrumptious, but nine times out of ten, that's not syrup. Most of the time it's actually motor oil because motor oil has a different viscosity, different density, and it doesn't necessarily get all soupy and sops up into the pancakes. And, and it just, you know, it perfectly rolls off and, and just gives you a much better image. It has a nice way of catching the specular highlights and everything much better than good old delicious maple syrup. But if you looked at it in the image, you never would know that it's motor oil. Seriously, look it up. Actually, we'll put a link in the in this in this uh, description just to show you a little bit. All right. So that's going to do it for this week, folks. I really do appreciate you all allowing me to share just a little bit of behind the scenes and a little bit of a, a lab to show you how you can set up your own food photography. Again, it doesn't take a whole lot. I highly recommend getting yourself some sort of tripod. There's a ton of different tripods out there for smartphones that don't cost a lot of money. Grab your favorite snack. Grab your favorite food, uh, whatever a plate of food that you have, put it on your dinner table. This is my dinner table. This is my dining room and it has a nice big old window right next to it. So you have your studio setting right there. You don't necessarily have to have a backdrop like I did, even though that backdrop is only $10. Set it up behind your scene, hang it up, get someone to help you just hold it behind the scenes, whatever it takes. You can do food photography and you can do it with your smartphone. It's that easy. All right. I look forward to talking to you all each and every week here in the network. So again, make sure you subscribe and, and checking out all the previous episodes. Make sure you're sharing out the show with others too. I really do appreciate that support. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this week. Thank you all for watching again. Safely create and dominate. 
And I'm still looking for justice for Breonna Taylor. Y'all take care. Hey, I'm Jason Howell, host of Hands On Android. Every week, I take a look at the Android operating system and the phone that you have in your hands to tell you how to use it better. Is it tips? Is it tricks? Is it little known secrets, experiments, even emails from fans of the show? You name it, we talk about it on Hands On Android. You can subscribe by going to twit.tv slash HOA and make sure that you do that so you don't miss a single episode. We'll see you there.